And Dr. McNeil, he was saying it really didn't matter whether Derek Chauvin's knee was on the neck or whether it was on the back of George Floyd. This testimony, we have said this so many times before in this particular trial, but with regards to medical experts, this one seemed to take the cake because he said, I'm not getting paid. And he was so layman in the way that he described how George Floyd's breath literally left his body. Um, he was, this man truly was a gift to the prosecution. Um, incredible. It's going to be so hard on cross-examination for Eric Nelson to be able to attack his uh, credibility, um, his expertise. He has over 30 years of experience. Um, and when they were establishing his um, expert status and saying uh, that Mayo Clinic, one of the premier clinics in our country, only gives an award every 10 years to one doctor uh, in the entire country, and they chose him. And so that's going to carry so much weight with the jury. But when he said in that sound bite we just heard, Dale, that these officers, regardless if the knee was on the neck, the way they had him sandwiched in between that hard ash fault and their pressure, all their weight, and he made a key point, plus the weight of the equipment they're wearing on George Floyd's neck, on his back, they created simply an impossible position, meaning where it was just impossible for him to breathe. And that's got to make major ways with the jury. Yeah, it's fascinating that he did bring up the equipment because that seemed to be something that has escaped all of us. But he also mentioned something else that I think a lot of people didn't see, which was that Derek Chauvin's entire body was on George Floyd. And he pointed out that the toe of the boot was off the ground. So it was not only the weight of Derek Chauvin, but it was also the weight of the equipment that he had on at the time and these other officers. And he said that as George Floyd struggled, he wasn't necessarily fighting back. He was literally trying to save his own life and breathe. Yes, and when he said, Jill, that um, in addition to making that point about Derek Chauvin's uh, foot being off the ground, all that weight, um, I, I remembered an earlier testimony, and they talked about when uh, Derek Chauvin was taken from the scene to City Hall for them to process what happened as part of the investigation. They noted Derek Chauvin's weight, but they also noted the weight of his equipment, and I remember it being approximately 30 to 40 pounds. So when you think about that amount of weight, um, that is just, it's shocking. Uh, that they thought it was acceptable. And again, not just Derek Chauvin, but that many officers on George Floyd's uh, body, preventing him from breathing. And uh, the way that he just so uh, skillfully, I felt, to be honest, like I was in a medical school class. I was like, maybe I can go to med school. Um, but really explaining <laughs> how breathing works with that analogy about the bucket and the handle and how when you have someone handcuffed, you can't lift the handle to pump the lungs to breathe because you're restricted. Uh, that was just really, really powerful powerful to me.